Kovac and Povo Hats Acceleration Driver. Should you be using mouse acceleration? We all want to be at the top of the leaderboard in our favorite games, right? Do you want to have the aim, movement, and general awareness that it takes to get to the top? Of course. Do you wish that you could whip around instantly, lock onto somebody's head, track them like it was a magnet and end them in a fraction of a second? Heck yeah. So why would you settle for this? When you can play like this. If you don't want to be forced to choose between being able to do quick flicks with high sensitivity or accurate shots with low sensitivity, I might be able to help. In the last three to four years, I played with and without the Povo Hat Kovacs Mouse Acceleration Driver. I have tested hundreds of acceleration profiles of every type imaginable. I've spent over half a thousand hours testing them in Aim Trainer applications alone. And I put in well over 2,000 hours testing them in-game, including in fast-paced PvP. I've learned a lot about mouse acceleration along the way, and now I use it everywhere, including the gameplay you see in this video. So the question is, should you be using mouse acceleration too? So back to our original question, should you be using most acceleration too? After years of working with it every day, I can only come to one conclusion. Maybe. It actually depends on a great many things. Like most everything in life, there's benefits and drawbacks, risk and reward. The end goal should always be to optimize the benefits and rewards while minimizing the costs and the drawbacks. Like other things in life, your greatest performance will always be at the optimum combination of these effects. When deciding if you should be using mouse acceleration, we need to be sure to specify what exactly it is that we're even talking about. If the question refers to the acceleration that's often built into games, the answer is almost certainly no, you shouldn't be using mouse acceleration. What I'm talking about in this video is Povo Hat & Kovacs' incredibly well done intercept driver for acceleration. It's popular for a reason, and that reason is that it's absolutely amazing. This driver works pretty much everywhere, which means that if you do use it, you can have the same aim feel everywhere. You can even use this to set up incredibly good profiles for general desktop use. The best part about this is that we can set up profiles of any kind that lean into how we play. We decide how it feels, not some company or developer. And if something feels wrong, fix it. We can change it. And we're not just limited to having or not having acceleration either. We can use this driver to allow arbitrary values for overall sensitivity. Even if a game doesn't allow tiny changes in sensitivity to preserve your muscle memory, this driver will allow us to do that. So now that we know what we're talking about, let's dive in. Let's actually think about what's happening when we move our mouse. When our mouse is moving, it has a certain velocity, but this velocity is not steady. It's constantly changing while we're moving it. This velocity thing is what mouse acceleration actually changes. When we do small movements, it makes them smaller. When we do big movements, it makes them bigger. Anyone who plays with sensitivity that's high enough to be able to whip behind them in a single flick knows how hard it can be to do cross-map headshots. Acceleration can completely eliminate this issue. Watch when I move the mouse here. I move it slowly at first, then I move it rapidly for a bit, then I move it slowly again and stop. What would this look like on the acceleration driver interface graph? In this screenshot of the interface for the acceleration driver, I added a small green pointer in Blender to indicate where on the graph the speed of the mouse movement would be. As you can see, the speed increases gradually, then it rapidly increases like I did with the mouse in the previous clip, then it reduces again and finally drops to zero. The horizontal part of the graph is the real speed of the mouse. The vertical part of the graph tells us what the driver is multiplying that speed by at any given point. In this case, from being stationary and up to slower movements, the sensitivity stays exactly the same, and that's at about 0.375 times normal sensitivity, which is roughly one-third. If I move my mouse at a speed that stays within that range of slow speeds where the graph is still horizontal, my sensitivity will stay at about one-third what it normally would be. If I move it a bit faster, however, 
the sensitivity will start to rise. By the time I'm moving a bit past 30 units of distance per unit time, the sensitivity is about the same as with the driver disabled. If I move it really quickly, however, the sensitivity will be almost double, even if I fling it as fast as I can. That means that if I move quickly to a target, or even if I flick it as hard as I can, I'll still get the same distance. I get to shoot accurately when shooting across the map, and I still get to look anywhere I want instantly. That's really all that acceleration does. It lets us decide where our sensitivity is for a given speed. If we want to be able to do 10 full 360 degree turns if we whip our mouse across the pad, but yet we think it should only do one tenth of a turn if we do that slow, we can do that. If we only want to make our smallest movements a little bit less shaky, we can do that too. We decide what this driver does. We can even create profiles that don't have any acceleration at all and only use it to make exact sensitivity settings for games that don't allow arbitrary settings. Then it would be the same sensitivity everywhere. It's a very, very powerful tool that allows you to do things that you can't do any other way. While there's benefits to using acceleration that cannot be had any other way, there's still drawbacks. There's two major drawbacks that I've discovered in my own gameplay. Muscle memory and tracking. The single most difficult thing to overcome is in learning muscle memory for flick or snap shooting. I mentioned before that while I can now relearn this in under 24 hours when I make a change in sensitivity, it used to take me three to four months to establish good muscle memory. What I didn't mention before, however, is the near Herculean effort that it originally took with the old practice method. The fundamental problem is this. When you're aiming in-game or doing your practice, unless your acceleration kicks into the maximum sensitivity almost immediately, Aiming at slower speeds for a short time can eventually convince your brain that your sensitivity is less than it really is for your flicks. The more gradual the acceleration ramp, the better you're tracking, but the worse that this muscle memory effect can be. What often happens next is that you'll go to flick and you'll overshoot. If you're overshooting most of the time, or doing so by large amounts, you don't have muscle memory. Overshooting does reappear every so often, so one thing that I do is to do my warm-up training in my aim trainer with a special acceleration driver profile. Put simply, it's a no excel acceleration profile. On the left, you can see my normal in-game profile and on the right, my practice profile for learning muscle memory. This particular acceleration profile has identical sensitivity to the highest that my normal in-game profile has, but it has it at every speed. This process gives my brain the hints that it needs, and muscle memory is built up way more rapidly than just practicing with the normal profile. If I still have problems, I have about a half a dozen profiles that gradually work back from no acceleration to my normal in-game acceleration, and I train for a few minutes with each one, gradually working my way backwards. This works incredibly well. It cannot be overstated how well this works. This process is part of what shaved my practice time by more than a hundred times for the same results. I plan on covering this in detail in later videos dedicated to aim practice, so make sure to sub if you want to learn the details of this process. When I do this process, when I'm done, I generally can't even feel the acceleration at all. It is that effective. The next most difficult thing to overcome is that acceleration can amplify errors in mouse movement and the greater the ratio in sensitivity, or steeper the ramp, the worse this effect is. What this feels like to the end user is that it's harder to smoothly track a moving object. Again, the steeper the ramp, the worse this is, but the shallower the ramp, the less it is. Depending on how you play, this can be super important in designing a profile. In this clip, I added two markers. The bottom green one denotes actual mouse speed and the red one above it denotes the actual mouse speed once acceleration is calculated. As you can see, small changes in actual mouse movement result in rather large changes of effective mouse movement. Those small shaky variations during tracking are amplified and the steeper the acceleration, the bigger this amplification effect is. The shallower the graph on the other hand, the less that it is. This is why I use a very gradual ramp now. As frustrating as this is, there are advanced aiming techniques that will minimize this problem. Some of them may even be a good idea even if you don't use most acceleration. And if you do learn them, that's just one less reason not to use acceleration. This here is an example of one of those techniques. While I just sort of found myself shooting this way naturally after years of aim trainer practice, 
I later found out that this is now an actual advanced technique that's taught to professional gamers. Some of the best players on earth aim this way. Instead of smoothly tracking, you simply memorize short snap distances and rapidly snap to the target as it moves. It takes way, way less brain power because the penalty for missed predictions in enemy movement while tracking drops to almost nothing. To train for this, I now use a trainer profile that has targets that pop up randomly, but very close to the original location, usually within about a half an inch to an inch or less, and then I flick them as fast as possible. It's incredibly effective, even if you do track smoothly. We all make mistakes in prediction, and being able to instantly get back on target is a huge leg up on the competition. While there are others, these are the main problems that you'll face using acceleration, but you can get around them so that you can have the benefits with the least drawbacks. Make your playstyle leverage your strengths and minimize your weaknesses. Lean hard into your new abilities when you're playing and stay aware so that you can manage your drawbacks. Push engagements that favor you now. Retreat and regroup from those that don't. This kind of thing is sage advice for anyone in any topic and it applies to playing with most acceleration too. So, to summarize the main issues for most acceleration, steeper and shorter ramps make muscle memory easier, but they make tracking harder. Making more gradual ramps makes the tracking easier, but it makes muscle memory much harder. The higher the overall acceleration between slow and fast movements, the worse both of these problems are. And finally, the part that we've all been waiting for. Our friend with benefits. Our cake and eat it too. The benefits of using mouse acceleration. So long as you have it well dialed in for you and your play style, you could sum up good mouse acceleration by simply describing it as smart sensitivity. It's the right sensitivity at the right time. When you're doing tiny aim adjustments to shoot headshots across the map, the sensitivity is low enough to do that. When you're tracking somebody moving back and forth in a doorway, it's at a medium level so that you can move fast enough to keep the crosshairs on them. If you need to instantly see behind you, Throw that mouse a few inches as hard as you can, and you're instantly staring at the guy who was just shooting you in the back, ready to snap the crosshairs onto his head and end him while he gapes in utter disbelief at what just happened. My beard hair is about five thou, or about one-tenth of a millimeter thick. So why did I tell you this? As good as this sounds, it doesn't really quantify the benefits in a tangible way. So, to demonstrate how helpful acceleration can be, I went into an actual game map in my current shooter, Destiny 2, and measured how large a regular NPC's head is at a distance of halfway across the map when ADS'd or zoomed in. With acceleration turned off and using my normal sensitivity, the distance that I have to move the mouse to move the crosshairs from the edge to edge of a bad guy's head results in me moving the mouse about a total of .009 inches, or 9,000, a machinist would say. That's about a quarter of a millimeter. That's how wide the head is, shooting it at halfway across the map. Or if we really want to get serious, pretending the hitbox and model are the same size, which they're not. If your crosshairs are smack in the middle of a bad guy's head at that distance, you only need to move the mouse four and a half thousandths of an inch, or about an eighth of a millimeter, before it would be a miss. This is where acceleration greatly helps. These days, I use about a five to one ratio, which means whipping the mouse causes five times as much movement as moving it slowly. That means that the hitbox has gone from nine thousandths of an inch across, or a quarter of a millimeter, to about 45 thousandths of an inch, or about 1.25 millimeters. At one time, I actually used a 20 to 1 ratio. That would make the head 180 thousandths of an inch, or 5 millimeters across. I don't care who you are, bigger effective targets are easier to hit. It's just that simple. Finally, we can answer the fundamental question, should you be using most acceleration? So summing up what we've covered so far, we know that acceleration can do the equivalent of making your targets bigger when you're doing fine aiming movements, but it does so at the risk of magnifying certain physiological errors, like tracking and interfering with building muscle memory. At the beginning when we asked the question of if you should be using acceleration and we said maybe, these are some of the things that it depends on. If you're young and you're in good shape, or you have room for a giant mouse pad, my advice is to either forego the mouse acceleration altogether and play with a lower sensitivity in a giant mouse pad, or, at most, play with a low ratio with something like a gradual ramp like a 2 to 1 ratio. That's where your flicks are only two times as fast as your slowest mouse movements. 
On the other hand, if you're older and your arm is liable to come flying off at the shoulder if you're trying to whip a mouse two feet to either side, or if you don't have the room, or for any reason you can't or don't want to do such ridiculously large arm movements, then mouse acceleration very well could be for you. Despite the drawbacks, it can allow you to do things that you just can't do without it. There's a lot of controversy surrounding mouse acceleration. Some of it's deserved, some of it's not. But the basics that we've covered here should give you a good idea of whether or not mouse acceleration is something that might help you. If you do decide to give it a whirl, remember these two major drawbacks so that you can work around them. If you can do that effectively, with practice, it can transform you into a force to be reckoned with. I plan on doing an entire series on both setting up and tweaking mouse acceleration, as well as how to train your aim with it for optimal results without wasting your time. While it might be tempting to just dive in, you may want to sub so that when this content goes up, you'll know. My original approach was to simply dial in the acceleration and practice with it. This took me over a quarter of a year to learn good muscle memory every time I made a change. Over the last few years, I've spent many hundreds of hours testing various practice approaches, and the best approaches that I've found are literally hundreds of times faster to get the same results. Together, we can spare you that frustration of endless effort and just get the results instead. And that's it, friends. Have a good one, and as always, GG's and good luck.